Hello and welcome to our devotion for today, which is Tuesday, July 14th. Um, joining me is our Director of Caring Ministries, Irene Tenneik, and her theme today is silence. And her reading comes from Psalm 65. God of Zion, to you even silence is praise. Promises made to you are kept. You listen to prayer and all living things come to you. When wrongdoings become too much for me, you forgive our sins. How happy is the one you choose to bring close, the one who lives in your courtyards. We are filled full by the goodness of your house, by the holiness of your temple. In righteousness you answer us, by your awesome deeds, God of our salvation, you who are the security of all the far edges of the earth, even the distant seas. You establish the mountains by your strength. You are dressed in raw power. You calm the roaring seas, calm the roaring waves, calm the noise of the nations. Those who dwell on the far edges stand in awe of your acts. You make the gateways of morning and evening sing for joy. You visit the earth and make it abundant, enriching it greatly by God's stream full of water. You provide people with grain because that is what you've decided. Drenching the earth's furrows, leveling its ridges, you soften it with rain showers. You bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness. Your paths overflow with rich food. Even the desert pastures drip with it, and the hills are dressed in pure joy. The meadowlands are covered with flocks, the valleys decked out in grain. They shout for joy. They break out in song. Here ends our reading. So um, all of us are familiar with Mother Teresa and the work that she did amongst the poor. And I found this book about Mother Teresa. It was actually her writings. Um, and it was very, very inspirational to me. Um, and just a wonderful little book to, to work my way through. And it's called Mother Teresa, No Greater Love. So um, there's a quote by Mother Teresa that really stuck with me. And it goes like this, we need to find God and he cannot be found in noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. See how nature, trees, flowers, and grass grows in silence. See the stars, the moon, and the sun, how they move in silence. We need silence to be able to touch souls. I love that quote. I love many of her quotes, but that is one of my favorites. So thinking about silence, silence can be so difficult for us. We are not comfortable with silence oftentimes. We have a busy, fast-paced society, and we like to fill it with noise, with music, with videos, with news, with whatever it is that we are filling our silence with. You know, we just get, we get into our cars, we turn on the radio to listen to the news or to music right away. Uh, as soon as we get home, we turn on music or the, we turn on the television. We have background noise going much of the time. So noise and busyness just fills our silent spaces. And sometimes I think it's so that we don't really have to ponder some of our difficult thoughts. We often like to keep our ears and our minds busy. Silence can be very disconcerting. During the night, it's in the silence where sometimes we have those really difficult times. We think about what we've done that day, what we're gonna do the next day. We think about maybe an argument we've had that day, about something that was left unresolved. We, we worry about our children and their futures. We worry about our health. We worry about COVID. We worry about all of the civil unrest all of these things go through our minds when we are laying there in the silence. And there's really no limit to what we're thinking about during that time. But as Mother Teresa said, it's in the silence where nature moves. And in our psalm reading today, we heard a lot about nature and God moving in the nature and God creating the nature. So my husband and I are blessed to have a small off-grid cabin out in the woods it is an amazingly silent and sacred space for us. When we just sit on the porch 
in complete and total silence in the evenings, that's when the animals start coming out. We start seeing the squirrels and the birds and the chipmunks and all the little critters that start coming out of the forest. Um, we also see some deer that walk across the front lawn and they really don't have any idea we're sitting there. We've had a couple of blast events this year, particularly where there have been a couple of brand new little baby fawns that were born not too far from our cabin. And we didn't even know they were there hiding into the weeds. And when we listened really carefully, we would suddenly hear the mom, we'd hear a little noise and we realized it was the mama calling and the little fawns would just spring up out of the weeds not too far from us and just sprint over and go find its mama. If it wasn't for us sitting just in the silence in those times, we wouldn't be hearing those things. We would be missing all of those beautiful things that God has provided for us in nature. People are also really uncomfortable with silence in conversations. We don't like to just sit in silence with someone. We try to fill those silences with whatever we can think of to say. Um, we don't like to just have silent spaces in our conversations. So one of the hardest things for me to learn both in my social work practice and as a chaplain is to learn how to just sit and be comfortable in those silences with people. I have learned over time that I don't really need to think of just the right thing to say or to do, particularly when someone is dying, when the family is waiting for their family member who's in surgery, when there's been a trauma and a family is just waiting for the doctor to come and tell them what's going on and what the prognosis is. I found that just sitting with people in their silence and actually just sitting in their pain and helping them to hold that pain in the silence is often what's really needed at that time and not words. So what strikes me about the quote by Mother Teresa is God is the friend of silence, which suggests to me that silence might just be the way to really connect with God. Also her last line, we need silence to be able to touch souls. Sometimes just sitting in silence with someone is the best thing that we can do, just to allow that space, just to be rather than do. So I look forward to the silent spaces in my day. I've learned to create them and I like them. I actually rarely turn on music or news or anything when I'm in my car or even at home. I don't really have a lot of noise around me. And those are the times that I find myself being able to just lift a prayer to God at the spur of the moment, to listen to God for some direction that I might be waiting for, or just letting my thoughts come to me, whatever they are, good, bad, or otherwise. So I'm going to just encourage you to find those silent spaces in your life, to create those silent spaces, to learn to be comfortable in them, to enjoy them, and to just listen to the silence and see what comes to you and turn off the background noise and connect with yourself and with God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for coming to us in the silence. We thank you for the beauty of your natural world and the peace and silence we can find there. Help us to be able to decrease the noise and distractions in our lives that keep us from connecting with you, with ourselves, and with others. Help us to know when it is time to offer words of comfort or encouragement and when it is time to just sit in silence with others and learn how to touch souls. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And may God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.